currently who, who I got told that I should come. Yes, I was going to say I was told to come down. So. <laughs> Well, the government's been announcing off-site manufacturing of homes for five years now, uh, but after five years, the best they can do is six new off-site manufactured homes in Rotorua. I mean, Rotorua's got a housing crisis. We've got hundreds of families living in motels uh, in Rotorua. Six new off-site manufactured homes just isn't going to cut it. It's good news um, in the most marginal sense of the word, but we've got far bigger uh, issues to deal with in Rotorua and around the country than just six homes will cope with. Well, six homes is just a drop in the bucket when it comes to Rotorua's housing crisis. We have hundreds of families living in motels in Rotorua. We have thousands of families living in motels uh, around the country. So six new off-site manufactured homes in Rotorua is just a drop in the bucket. And in terms of the off-site manufacturing, um, generally speaking, is this a good strategy? Yeah, we're in favour of it and we want to see more of it. The government's been talking about it for five years. Uh, but made very little progress, and all we've seen today is just literally six homes uh, announced for Rotorua. They've been talking about it for five years. There's a lot more we need to do on off-site manufacturing, and there's a lot more we need to do on New Zealand's housing crisis as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That was easy. Could have done TVNZ by itself. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, today I'm going to be asking Grant Robertson more questions about his spending decisions in this year's budget. We already knew that he blew his spending limits. Our read of budget documents now reveals that that included a half billion dollar overspend on climate change initiatives compared to what was recommended by Treasury. Treasury specifically warned that if he spent more than $2.4 billion on climate change initiatives that would create inflationary pressure. He went ahead anyway and spent $2.9 billion yet more evidence of this government's addiction to spending. And that is what I will be asking questions about today. <laughs> um, Nicola, more non-beneficiaries are receiving supports from MSD than last year. Is the government doing enough to help low middle income New Zealanders? Sorry, can you just repeat the beginning of the question? Yeah, so more non-beneficiaries, people not on a benefit, are mm -hmm. getting hardship grants from MSD than last year. Mm. Is the government doing enough to support low and middle well, what we know is that inflation is eating a hole in everybody's pockets, and the best thing that the government can do is present a plan to tackle inflation, because with prices going up as fast as they are and wages not keeping up, New Zealanders from all walks of life are going desperate. Uh, we can see that at the food banks, we can see that with people going backwards. And so our advice to the government is get the Reserve Bank focused on its job, be disciplined about your own spending, release bottlenecks in the economy, stop adding costs to business, uh, and also uh, ensure that you're getting value for every taxpayer dollar. Does national support the um, hypothecation of ETS revenue on to spending on climate change initiatives? We've specifically said we oppose a number of the initiatives in the Climate Change Fund. For example, the $650 million that has been allocated for corporate welfare. We've now learned uh, that advice from ECA says that around four out of the five projects that have been funded out of that fund uh, weren't actually going to provide additional benefit. But on the, specifically on the, just the, I suppose, the ideological point of whether money from the emissions trading scheme should be recycled back into climate change initiatives, support opposed or kind of on the fence? Well, our focus is on getting value for those dollars. We need to remember that ultimately those are being paid for by taxes that New Zealanders pay, so they need to see really good value for that spending. Thank you. Can we just wrap it up? Uh, kia ora, greetings everybody. Uh, in the first instance, uh, can we express uh, our sorrow and condolences uh, to the family of Corporal Abelin uh, for their loss at this point in time? Uh, we're advised that, certainly from New Zealand Defence Force, uh, that we'll be wrapping support around uh, the family at this point in time. Uh, and those are uh, with consideration to the details that we do have at hand. Um, uh, I also want to stress too that uh, at no point in time uh, since the conflict began 
uh, that any of our personnel have been authorised to enter into Ukraine, and I've been advised that none have. Uh, with respect to Corporal Abelin, uh, who was on leave without pay, which is well known to you all, um, uh, uh, the process is an operational one, but I'm advised that as they take leave without pay, they are asked to instruct on where they travel internationally. Uh, unfortunately, in this case, I understand it wasn't uh, advised that they would be going to Ukraine. I also can tell you, too, that the New Zealand Defence Force, on the advice of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, uh, won't be approving any uh, leave without pay for our personnel to be travelling to Ukraine. Uh, that's all I have at this point in time. Or shall we open for questions? Well, from a foreign affairs perspective, uh, can we, can, from a foreign affairs perspective, can we uh, also uh, convey our condolences uh, to the family? We know this is a difficult time. Uh, we're offering uh, consular support on the ground from Warsaw, uh, but as has previously been advised, we're limited uh, in uh, what we can do. Uh, which is why the travel advisory has not changed and we are not advising New Zealanders to go to Ukraine. Uh, but at this time, we will do as much as we can um, through our consulate support to be able to uh, work with the Ukrainian government and the family around next steps. What, what do we know about the circumstances under which our people, um, Evelyn died? Uh, from what I've been advised, we know very little, and the work is currently underway uh, through both our agencies to find out as much detail as possible. Uh, but of course, we look towards the family and the decisions that they'll need to make during this stressful time, and our offer is to support them. And do you know anything about, and do you have any, um, any update on the mission to Ukraine that you can yeah, no, we, look, we have no uh, update on that particular point at this time. Like I say, the job now is to find out more details, uh, and once those details come through, we'll be better informed and in a better position. Is the defense, is the defense, is the defense, uh, does it confirm that he was on leave and he was there as a citizen as opposed to being an active soldier? Oh, look, I think the entire situation is a complicated one. Um, with respect to the way leave is administered through the New Zealand Defence Force, I'm completely satisfied with that process. Uh, so any loss and the entire situation in Ukraine is a complicated one. And as Minister Mahut and I have already detailed, we're, we're to find out more details, but we'll offer that support. Is the Defence Force now? Minister, the Defence Force is a Kiwi soldier, and he has gone to fight against a war that New Zealanders participate in. Do you consider him a hero? Oh, look, I consider all of our NZDF personnel heroes. They are ambassadors and great leaders uh, for our uh, community and our country. So um, I do consider all NZDF personnel heroes. Will the Defence Force now be going back to all of uh, its personnel who have identified that they're overseas and asking whether or not they intend to go to Ukraine? Oh, look, that's an operational matter for them, but I am advised and was quite clear that with respect to Ukraine, uh, one, that none uh, have indicated in their leave without pay applications that they'll be travelling to Ukraine, and we're quite clear on the process uh, that that option uh, is banned by the New Zealand Defence Force. Do you want them to go back to all the personnel who are overseas and to ask them? Do Say that again, sorry? Do you sorry? want them to go back to all of the personnel and ask? Uh, well, the difficulty with that is we don't know when people go on leave without pay. Uh, so the person who's on leave without pay is not going to be able to ask. Well, the difficulty with that is when people go on leave without pay, there aren't uh, regular check-in times, if you like, uh, and I just need to trust that the process for those who do apply for leave without pay are quite clear at the beginning. And as long as they know the expectations from the NZDF and this government, that Ukraine is a no-go no zone. Jessica and then over here, just What does it say about the state of the Defence Force at the moment that you've got these soldiers wanting to go over and use the skills that they trained for outside of what the what the Defence Force is, is allowing them to do? Look, I'm not, I'm not going to comment on uh, their decision-making rationale on why Corporal Abelin went there, but I'm quite clear, and I have been for some time now, that the regeneration of our Defence Force is a priority for us coming out of Operation Protect uh, and with the pandemic, um, uh, having come through the, the, the bulk of the pandemic, our job now is to regenerate that workforce. Uh, and we're committed to doing that. Part of that is about deployments, and 
You saw last week our announcement for 120 of our people to go up and train Ukraine fighters is one of those deployment opportunities that we're looking for to support the regeneration of our workforce. Um, but I won't comment on the decision-making rationale of Corporal Evelyn. Can you explain what foreign affairs um, ramifications there are when we've made a decision not to deploy Ukrainian fighters to Ukraine? Because that's what the yeah, we have to be really clear that this is a person who took leave. They were not representing New Zealand. They were not representing the New Zealand Def Defence Force. Sadly, that life has been lost. We will do everything that New Zealanders would expect us to do, as does the family, work with the Ukrainian government to bring this citizen home. And that, those are the next steps we're focused on. Well, well, the Minister of Defence has confirmed that the individual was not on active duty, took leave to make a private decision to travel to a place which was undeclared to their employer, uh, and they have since uh, sadly passed away. So on that basis, we will do what we, you would expect us to do, work through our consular support to be able to negotiate with the Ukrainian government and the family on next steps to bring that body home. Minister, Minister, Minister Hinnale, um, are you, are you, I mean, not standing before you, confident uh, in the Minister's operational decisions around leave, given that there was a soldier without leave without pay in Ukraine, uh, are you expecting the Defence Force to basically check in on everyone who was on leave without pay and make sure they were free? Well, like I say, um, that's not as easy or as straightforward as, as bringing everybody who's gone on leave without pay. The process is clear at the start. If those who do apply for leave without pay uh, stick to their word in their application on where they're going, it should be reasonably, my expectation is it'd be reasonably easy to connect with them again. And if that's what the NZDF decide that they'll do, then I'll support that. But I haven't made any clear instruction to them to reach out to those who have. And have you, have you had any advice on whether this soldier was paid for the deal? Uh, no, I haven't had any detail of such... Uh, look, I'm, I'm not going to. I, I, in the first instance, I see that as a as a uh, particular operational matter. And so far as as we all know, the NZDF have their standards and also their process for reprimanding their people. We're quite clear, and Minister Mahuta has made it clear from the start of this conflict that Ukraine uh, is a place where our people are advised not to go. Uh, and sadly, that's. The Oh, I can answer. I can answer that. Look, in terms of the travel advisory and not advising New Zealanders to go to Ukraine, that is the case. If they were in any country and they they perhaps need New Zealand support, we would expect that they would uh, sign up to our safe travel register of that particular country. So we are able, through our nearest consular uh, support, uh, offer support, um, offer assistance when needed. So there is there, there is a mechanism. Uh, whether or not individuals choose to use that mechanism is a matter for them. We would have, based on our safe travel register, those who have chosen uh, to uh, register their names there. Again, I have to be really clear, New Zealand's travel advisory is not to go to Ukraine. They make a decision to go there based on their own risk assessments, which are high, and if anything happens, we will uh, try and offer as best we can the support that is necessary. We'll come to Fati Tewaki. Ai, ko rungoa tu hau i etahi ripo ataka ki atu ko reira no etahi tangata no kone ngari ko na taku i rapu hia ki roto i taku tari ara te ope katu a mehe mea ko etahi ano ka reira ko tara te wiki mai ki aune ka hore.
kia matara, tirohia ki ngā tohu tohu, me ngā matara tanga kua kōrerohia nei e mini tamahuta i tēnei wātanu, he wāhi mōre are a tēnei, me kaua koutou e whai whakaaro ke anga atu ki taua whenua. Say that again, sorry. Is a citizen. Is a citizen. What information do you have about the extent to which the Look, with respect to the process, I'm confident uh, at this point in time that those processes are robust. I have asked the team to have a look at some of the precedents in terms of past conflicts and whether or not this has happened. And of course, sadly, as this news has unfolded, that work's still underway. We have, we have to go. Have, you, have any of your officials or have you been in touch with either the Ukrainian or the Russian ambassadors in New Zealand about this situation? Have they been in touch to ask? about New Zealand's position when it comes to war. No, sadly, this is a, a matter of a private citizen. Uh, as I've already expressed, we are working with the Ukrainian government on next steps as we are alongside the family as well. Our discussions will be with the Ukrainian government to negotiate the return of, uh, of the deceased. Why is the, the Russian investment here? Uh, because the conversations we have with Moscow uh, are important uh, to us. We have to keep that diplomatic channel open. However, in this particular case, our discussions are with the Ukrainian government.